Let's go to Revelation chapter 4. Now, this is very interesting. I want to show you something here. At Revelation chapter 4. Now, notice that I'm going to show you a little contradiction here, which is going to be interesting. Notice to John at Revelation chapter 4, verse 1, he says that this trumpet voice is known as the what? First voice, correct? All right, so notice right here that this is a first voice. Now, I want you to go to 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15. Now, notice the contradiction right here. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 52. Notice that Paul writes right here, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the what? Last, Last trump. Yeah. So that's the final. Yeah. So what is going on here? John, it's the first, but to us is the last. Oh, I just gave the answer right there. So notice right here, to the church, this is our final calling. We're done. Throughout the church age, God has spoken to his people through vision, uh, through direct communication, through prophets at the early age of the apostles and Jesus Christ. Then he transformed it into his word, his, word, his precious word after that. His last time he's going to call us, brethren, is come up hither. That is the last time that the church on this earth to us will hear. But John, at Revelation chapter 4, verse 1, that's the beginning for him. That's the first voice. Yeah. Why? Because read the last part of verse 1. I will show thee things which must be hereafter. Yeah. See, that's the first of a series of the end times where God is going to give out several voices. Another reason that you've got to understand is that John, he says at verse 2, immediately I was in the what? Spirit. Do you remember when he was in the spirit? What time period? Look at Revelation 1. Revelation chapter 1, in the tribulation. Revelation chapter 1, verse 10. I was in the Spirit on the what? Lord's day. See, that's the tribulation timeline. And heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. Ah, did you remember what I taught at Revelation 1.10? Here John is in the Spirit on the Lord's day, tribulation, but behind him... Before the tribulation, behind the tribulation, before the tribulation, I just like to say before the tribulation for our critics. Before the tribulation, he what? Hears that voice calling. Boom, 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 and boom. Isn't prophecy amazing? When you talk about the revelation of God, and that's no coincidence, the title of the book is Revelation. When you're in a revelation experience, you see double applications, different timelines, everything happening at once. Yeah. Because you're experiencing God's point of view. And God's point of view is not bound by time. Amen. He is past, present, and future all at once. I am that I am. This is a phenomenal, amazing book that you're reading. All right, let's go to Revelation chapter 4 again. Let me show you another interesting thing that's pre-tribulation rapture. What you'll notice right here is that John says at Revelation chapter 4, verse 2, I was in the spirit, and behold, a throne was set in where? Heaven. Oh, wait a minute. Notice that John, he's experiencing the spirit, but the spirit is no longer on the earth. He's up in heaven. Wait a minute. Did you remember reading Revelation 1, 2, and 3? Uh, let's look at Revelation chapter 3, for example, verse 22. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the what? Spirit saith unto who? The churches. Notice that at Revelation chapter 1 as well, Revelation chapter 1, verse 20, verse 20. The seven churches are what? The seven churches golden candlesticks on this earth. So notice right here, he's got seven right here of this golden candlestick. And remember, the seven spirits of God speaking to the seven churches, correct? 
The Holy Spirit is down here. Oh, I already drew that, so I don't have to do this, right? Yeah. Doesn't this make sense now? Acts chapter 2, the Holy Spirit came down upon the who? The church. The church was down here, and all of a sudden, what? You're up there? Isn't this what? Pre-tribulation rapture. Now, if you don't think there's a pre-tribulation rapture at the two first verses of Revelation chapter 4, you weren't reading and studying your Bible. This is more than convincing proof. There is a pre-tribulation rapture going on. And I got one more pre-tribulation rapture proof over here if we keep reading. So let's look at Revelation chapter 4 again and keep reading here. Spirit down here with the church, but now the Spirit's up there. Verse 3, and he that sat, so the one who's sitting on the throne, was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone. So there are two different minerals that God looks like, jasper and sardine. And there was a rainbow round about the throne. Not only that, there's a rainbow around the throne of God. That's going to be a phenomenal thing. So there's a rainbow around it. Insight like unto an emerald. So everything looks like emerald in totality with all of that. Now, I'm going to show you uh, some interesting verses here. Look at verse 4. And round about the throne... Yep, I'm going to squeeze this in. Okay, so this is really interesting. Round about the throne were what? Four and twenty seats. Okay, let's get into some little deep stuff. If I go a little bit over the time, I'm sure you might forgive me, right? <laughs> okay. So forgive me a little bit if I go over the time, because this will be very interesting. Okay. So there are 24, notice it says elders. Elders around the throne. Now, who are these elders right here? Sitting, they're sitting down with Jesus, uh, clothed in white raiment. They got white raiment on, and they had on their heads what? Crowns of gold. What? Wait a minute. Remember chapter 2 and 3, for example? Look at chapter 3, verse 18. He's speaking to the church, right? They've got what? They've got white garments. Look at Revelation chapter 3, verse 11. Crowns. The church has a crown. Uh, look at verse 21. They're sitting where the throne the Father is. You know who these are? These are Christians up in heaven. There is no doubt. John experienced the rapture where the Christians are, and he sees the Christians up there. Is that enough for pre-tribulation rapture proof? Amen. That's good, preacher. Now, if that's not a, now, here's the, uh, if that's not enough, how do we know that these are 24 elders raptured up in heaven? Some of the critics will say, well, it says 24, so this can't mean all the Christians. No, look at verse 10. The four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever. Uh, now let's skip down to chapter 5. Chapter 5 and read verse, uh, let's see right here, 8. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders, the twenty-four elders, what did they say? They say, verse 9, they sung a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood. So we're saved by Jesus' blood, right? But look at the number. Out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. That's just not 24 then, okay? This is a lot of people washing the blood of the Lamb. These are Christians. Now, the interesting question then is, why is there 24, right? Well, the first thing is this. Read the word as it says. What does it say right here? Elders. What does elder mean? It's like, did you remember Revelation 2 and 3? God, he was not speaking to the people of the church, even though he was. But that's not what it says. He was speaking to who? The angel, ah, you're using your head. The angel of the church. What does that mean? Remember, angel meant a representative of the whole church. So Jesus was speaking to everyone in the church, all those people, 
But he's speaking it through that representative, the angel. If he did that at chapter 2 and 3, why not chapter 4? Because it's the same book we're talking about. Yeah, elders, if you read every verse in your Bible about elders, these guys are representatives of their tribes, their groups. They are ambassadors. By the way, I would encourage you to look up the word 24 in your Bible. It is probably mentioned only twice in your Bible. When you look up the word 24, you know what you're going to find out? Representatives of their group. That's what it's going to mean. Then the question is this, who are these 24 representatives of the whole Christian group right here? What we believe is this, is that a theory, so I can only say this is a theory, not proof. Look at the... Look at the book of, oh, keep your hand at Revelation 4 and go to Revelation 21. Revelation 21. Revelation 21. These could be referring to two people, that groups of people that Satan has always attacked and hated. The 12 tribes of Israel... Literal, physical Jews. These are referring to Christians. No, because then you got these guys. The 12 apostles. What does apostles and tribes mean? Representatives of their whole group right here. That's what it is. So thus you see the church and Israel. Why? Because ultimately... When Jesus Christ died on the cross, even though the Old Testament system is different from the New Testament system, ultimately, what you got to understand is that the Old Testament saints, when Jesus died on the cross, they finally had access to heaven by his blood. The Christian church, when we received Christ by faith through his blood, we immediately had access to heaven. That's why both groups are counted right here. And notice right here that, at, let's see right here, Revelation chapter 21. Notice he says at verse 10, And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. Now you'll notice right here that he prepares this new Jerusalem but notice that who are the names mentioned over here. The names that are mentioned are at verse 12. And had a wall great and high and 12 gates and at the gates 12 angels and names written thereon. Did you remember Revelation chapter 2 and 3? I will give you a new name. That is applicable to only one group? No, it was two groups. The church and tribulation Jews. Now look how this plays out now if you don't believe Jew and Christian here. The names written thereon, which are the names of the one, twelve tribes of the children of Israel. There you go, Jews. Now look at verse 14. And the wall of the city had twelve foundations, and in them the names of the what? Twelve apostles of the Lamb. See, now you got the church there. So this is a theory, what it could be representing right here. So the theory is, is that because, remember, these 24 elders said, we're going to reign, we're going to rule. And chapter 2 and 3 talks about the context of overcoming. The overcoming for Christians is by faith, faith, 1 John chapter 5. For tribulation saints, it's by keeping the commandments and faith, Revelation 22 and Revelation 21 and Revelation 14. So we see right here that with these 24 elders... What we have is Jews, and then we have the Christian church. And then we're all the way up in heaven seeing the tribulation unfold after that. And guess who are the two people, the two programs, which proves dispensationalism that God always used? It's not one group of people. It was always two. The, old, the Jews, the nation of Israel, and the church. Those are the two programs undoubtedly you see throughout the entire Bible. All right, let's cover more interesting doctrines. I've got some really fun ones at verse 5 and 6. We'll talk about the sea of glass, the firmament, and we're going to talk about the four cherubims and the fifth one.
at the next five verses next week. Heavenly Father, I want to, Heavenly Father, I want to pray, Heavenly Father, that you will please bless today's Bible study. I pray that we've grown so much in knowledge of the scriptures and that we can be able to say, what a blessed book. It's so fascinating to study. Thank you so much for a, a spectacular book. Help us to grow in grace and to give you more, more of the glory with what we've learned. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.